Hi, my name's William Billingsley, and I'd like to tell you about the intelligent book. But first, let me tell you about a problem. You've possibly seen all the buzz about MOOCs, massively open online courses, and seen a dozen or so technologies that can make virtual online classrooms seem somewhat interactive, but there's something they've forgotten. There's millions of students sitting in real classrooms in real institutions, 14 million full-time students in nearly 5,000 institutions in the US alone, and millions upon millions more students around the world at just oodles of different universities. And there's millions more people in training sessions at companies and conferences sitting in the same room as their teacher, and they've been having to put up with this. Oh, the prettier version. Slides full of pictures that look great while the speaker's telling you a story, but you look back on them a week later and they don't tell you a darn thing. But times are changing fast. Courses are trying to introduce studio models and inverted pedagogies. And if you were a lecturer teaching, say, AI this year, would you want to write yet another set of bullet points describing particle filters? Or would you just want to show one of those great videos the online courses have put up on YouTube? I think teaching is going to shift from being all about producing your own content to being about interactivity around curated content. And really, the shift started 400 years ago. It's a long time since anyone cared that their textbook was written by a different university than the one they're sitting in. So let me tell you my vision of the future, a two-step plan to the intelligent book being an ecosystem for evolving, interactive, rich, clonable and forkable content. The GitHub of teaching, if you like. First, we make it dead simple to add interactivity and smarts around whatever you've got already. You're using PowerPoint? Upload it. Now you can topic tag not just the presentation, but every slide of the presentation. The really important formulas on slide 43, while well, slide 1 just has the date and course title, now your students can hop right into it. And they can hop from it to the video on YouTube, the online guide somewhere else, the really simple explanation their friend in the course wrote. You just brought the whole of the web into your slides too. Or at least the useful bits you let in anyway. Oh, and did I mention how handy it is to let your students chat on the main screen in your lecture, asking the questions they're not game to stick their hand up for, and their colleagues and your tutors answering them before you've even finished the sentence you are saying, let alone read the question? Or being able to throw in a live poll to see whether the class is keeping up, what they're having problems with, whether the course is moving too fast or too slow. Waiting until the end of semester for your class to fill in their paper course feedback forms is no longer for you, my friend. Or how about tracking what your students find useful and when? Which pages do they visit? What do they add? What do they like? What do they study the night before the big exam? Now you can know. Or how about we take that conversation from the class and continue it right on in revision? In their studies, at home, in the lab, in the library, in class or out of class, it can keep right on going. Hey, you could even run a MOOC if you wanted. And that's just from uploading the slides. You've barely even done any work yet. I mean, what could you do next? Do a demo live in class and paste the output into the notes while the students are still chatting. Add codes, maths, my next slide is someone else's website. It's a class exercise where we all write it together. It's a cool online simulation. My goodness, the things we can do. Okay, if you're a teacher, hopefully I've sold you on step one. Step two is fairly simple. The teachers and the stats do most of it for us. At the end of your course, we've got loads of data on just what your students did and all the content in your book has just been road tested. And the stats can tell you what worked and what didn't. And you can ditch the bad bits. And you can take content from other intelligent books to fill in the blanks. And by cloning and forking books, mixing and matching content from course to course and cohort to cohort, the intelligent book becomes a vibrant ecosystem of ever-improving content. And if you were a new teacher wanting to start a new course, where else would you go? Where are we at? I've built the third version of the system now, and this time I think I've really got it right. As I record this, 70 students are taking their software studio course using it in Australia, and we're opening the system up for others. You want to teach a course using it? Great, let's get you up and running. Well, that's enough from me. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Email me at william at theintelligentbook.com, follow the project on Twitter at The Intelligent Bee, or even on Google+. My name's William, and I'm at theintelligentbook.com. Pop round sometime.